when I went off hundreds of miles away to middle of nowhere, Wisconsin. It wasn't that I would get in the wrong crowd. It wasn't that I would drop out. It wasn't that I would make a wrong turn and end up in a bad neighborhood. My parents' biggest fear when I left was that I would get shot by a police officer. One of the players on that team decided to call one of my teammates the N-word. Um, I've had people cut uh, KKK stuff out of the history books and write notes on them and put them in my backpack for me to see when I get home. And this, this is happening to me in middle school as a, as a child. The side comments you hear. There have been many instances where I've turned my back to discrete forms of racism because I did not want to be that guy. You're too nice to be really black. You're just another white girl with a tan skin. Telling a black person they are the whitest person they've ever met because they're not ghetto. These are all just simple things to other people, but to us, they're major. It's like having a trauma person tell you what their trauma was over and over and over again. And that's like me having to tell my story over and over and over again. Over the course of my lifetime, there's been a great reluctancy to have serious conversations. Black America is hurting, and we have been hurting for a very long time. It's been incredibly difficult for me to digest all of all of my thoughts and emotions. It's a combination of anger, frustration, disappointment, sadness. Heartbroken, disappointed, and just plain angry. From a young age, I was taught that I had to try twice as hard to sit at the same table as others, and that no matter what I do, um, I can be instantly judged just based off the color of my skin um, to be something that I'm not. Time after time, black people have died at the hands of a cop. Breonna Taylor. Trayvon Martin. Trayvon Martin. George Floyd. George Floyd. George Floyd. George Floyd. So you're always in fear of being that statistic. The killing of George Floyd is nothing new. The recent death of George Floyd was the last straw. I am the only African American across three volleyball programs at Stanford. Only black female head coach in men's volleyball. It's still disheartening to see no one that looks like me. And playing in a sport that is predominantly white, um, you hear a, a lot of things and you deal with a lot of things. I play a sport where I'm usually one of maybe two or three black people on the court on a good day. Coaches, you have to check in with your players. A lot of people have been very active on social media, posting things, etc. but, um, you know, posting those things are great, but if there's no change that's followed with it, no action taken behind it, I don't think, I don't think anything will be different. People can be blinded by their privilege and not even know that it's there. They didn't have to worry about the marginalization of their community. They didn't have to worry about police shooting them for no good reason. Social media post isn't enough. Sign a petition. Call or text one of those numbers you see when you're scrolling through social media. Let's donate. Let's spread the word, spread knowledge. Have those difficult conversations. Um, confront your friends, confront your family. Racism is a catalyst to so many other problems in this country. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. This is not just blacks versus whites. It is all races versus racists. You are either with us or against us. We need to really come together right now, educate ourselves, talk about our personal biases, and be willing to listen. As cliche as it sounds, it comes down to love, and, and love for all people and of every background. It's all love from us. That darkness uh, cannot uh, drive out darkness, only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. Um, and we must meet the forces of hate with the power of love. Now is the time for change. Enough is enough. Black lives matter. Enough is enough. We are one of the most diverse countries, and it's time we use diversity as a strength. I believe we'll be a better country as a byproduct. So where are you going to be standing? Who are you going to be? They're out there protesting for my life. When arguments come up and you don't know which side of the fence you're on, I want to ask you, does my life matter to you if I die because if I die today they would give my parents and I'm sorry so does my life matter do black lives matter you tell me